I am Eleonore Halkier and I work at the INA, which is the French National uh, Institute specialized in audiovisual archiving. Uh, I have come to INA in uh, 2015, but I have been more specialized in web archiving uh, since the beginning of this year, so it's only been six months, because I'm responsible of a department which includes web archiving, among other things. I coordinate uh, all kinds of acquisitions uh, made in uh, INA, uh, which includes uh, television and uh, radio broadcasts, and as well web archives. Uh, but uh, web archiving is also a more unscient activity in INA since it began in 2002. The OID part uh, began in 2002, but the official law that uh, allowed us to collect uh, web archives um, was um, put into effect in 2009 which means that the real industrialized uh, web archiving began in 2009. Uh, well, the first specialty of INA is uh, French uh, radio and television archives, but um, when, uh, when web appeared, we saw that uh, it could be a source of information to make the documentation of radio and television. So at the beginning, it was a kind of complementary description of uh, what uh, we archive for, uh, for broadcasts. And today, we have seen that uh, the practices have uh, been really have known a real evolution, and uh, internet has become an independent object, and we think that it's very um, related to what we see on broadcast, but it's also an independent object that we have to archive as an independent object. So at the beginning it was dependent, and now it's because it's interesting by itself. French web archiving is um, shared between the French National Library and INA, and the part uh, for which INA is responsible is all the websites related to media, so to uh, French uh, television and uh, radio. And at the beginning it was only websites, but uh, then we added uh, new objects like the radio streams and uh, today YouTube, Twitter and maybe uh, Facebook very soon. We have begun with Twitter uh, in uh, 2013 and we have a full text uh, index on Twitter since uh, 2016. And we hope that uh, at the end of this year, we'll be able to archive Facebook as well and Instagram a bit later. We have uh, special tools uh, with um, uh, search engines, uh, full text search engines for all the websites and the videos that capture uh, related to the websites and also a specialized um, search engine for uh, Twitter. We have uh, eight people in the team, uh, two of them, well, should, no, I should be, four of them are in the OED team. So they really developed all the tools and especially the crawler tools, the crawler engine. Uh, we have two people specialized in operation uh, to be sure that everything is all right. And two people specialized in creation. So eight people. Well, we have no uh, specific QA process, but we make, uh, let's say, kind of indirect QA. For example, when we have a specific curate operation, it's the opportunity to, to check if every website is well archived. So we have this kind of uh, documentary operations, which allow us to check that we have all what we are supposed to have for a specific website or Twitters on a specific uh, topic, for example. Uh, I couldn't say how much. Um, because anyway, we put, we put everything on consultation for researchers, uh, even if there's no QA. But uh, yeah, very minimal part of it is, has a specific QA. But we are working on it, and I hope we'll have some QA process uh, sure. in a few time. The two people who are uh, focused on uh, curation, uh, they make it full time. So in their work, indirectly, they have a part of QA, even if it's not code like this. So I would say uh, maybe a third time of these two people is kind of QA. The newest thing, I think, was the appearance of um, uh, social networks. So since 2009, the fact that you are archiving today, uh, Twitter, for example, it was really, it had nothing to do with the websites we collected till now. So that's the newest thing, I think. Actually, we don't ask our curators to have any technical skill when they come. Uh, since our website um, archiving um, domain is focused on media, we ask them to have a good knowledge of uh, this media context, so the history of uh, media in France in particular. Uh, then they have to have a good knowledge of methodology, of creation methodology, but not specifically, specifically uh, applied to, to web because we have our own models that just have to be quite rigorous and um, yeah, to follow the rules.
The web archiving in France is shared between, uh, between the National Library and us. We have a close collaboration with the National uh, Library, so it's our normal partner. And we also have more uh, punctual partnerships with uh, laboratories, university laboratories, for example, if they have to, um, to develop a study about a topic that is quite illustrated on Twitter, they can ask us to make a specific acquisition of tweets uh, with specific hashtags or from specific accounts. And we make this collect especially for them. So we had, uh, for example, these last year's uh, collaborations like this uh, with laboratories who studied um, the effect of the attacks uh, that have, uh, appeared in Paris uh, in 2015. And uh, we made a specific collection for, us, for them. If they wanted to, they could uh, tell us what they want us to collect because we have a tweet account and we make kind of communication, but we, we don't address the great grand public. Um, so it means that we can add new hashtags or new objects to our collection, uh, but most of the time they come from um, researchers' community and not from the public itself. No, uh, we, we know that um, the archive is not um, very, very used, but it's one of the things we had to work on. But you know, we did not make any specific uh, study on it. Yes, for example, in the case that I uh, said before, uh, when we made specific collections around a topic which is not uh, specifically related to media, because uh, the attacks, uh, for example, uh, has nothing to do with our um, natural uh, domain of collection, we make specific corpus or data set to show people this, why, to explain to them why they will find some specific tweets about these kind of topics. So it's a way of presentation in our um, uh, application where people can understand how it works and how they will uh, understand the different parts of the archive. So we have um, 85 uh, billions of versions of URLs uh, and altogether the websites we archive represent uh, 14,000 uh, websites. Uh, and we also have uh, 1 billion tweets coming from uh, 13,000 uh, accounts, so all specialized about uh, media. And we also have uh, today 22 million videos, which represent 2.3 uh, million hours. And all together, it, made, uh, it makes uh, 6.5 petabytes. Well, actually, I wouldn't be able to give any name of the software because everything we use was uh, homemade. So we don't give them any name. We just have the crawler, for example which is uh, the inner scroller. At the beginning, um, our, our well, web archive was considered as a kind of documentation, secondary documentation for television and radio. And it was related in this kind of secondary source to understand how radio and television work. And today, it has a more dynamic relationship to radio and, um, and television, since internet has become uh, a place where people come to watch videos, even if they are not interested in television itself or in radio itself. So we have a more dynamic kind of link, uh, which says that if you are interested in the topic, maybe we'll find today more things on the internet than on the television and the radio. But it's all, always the idea of complementarity between all these kind of objects um, and in a kind of um, since whatever they come from, from television or from internet, all videos are uh, objects that uh, illustrate the reality of this, this society of today. And it's the way we want to give it to researchers uh, as an access so that they can uh, search topics uh, on all kinds of sources and all kinds of objects wherever they come from. Well, for, for the next year, uh, we want to continue acquisition and we want to develop the service of uh, collection mm -hmm. on uh, Facebook and maybe on Instagram as well. And uh, it's uh, quite difficult to say what we'll do in 2025, since Internet is moving so, so fast that we, well, we have only a projection for the 12 next months, but I wouldn't say later. You spoke about QA, uh, which is a challenge, of course, and we still have to work on it. Uh, a first question we had asked before was the issue of um, completeness, of uh, the guarantee that we have everything that could exist on the internet, but we know already that this is not possible. So we make a kind of sample and we document the sample to explain how it was uh, made. But we think that today the most challenging uh, thing is the coherency between all these kind of objects since 
uh, I already said, we had television, radio, then websites, and then uh, social networks, and then radio, stream radios. Uh, they are very different objects, but we have to find how to put them as uh, linked objects all together. And that's really the question today. We are thinking about the methodology that makes possible a common curation for all these kind of objects. We don't have the, the, same, the same shape, the same frame, but they speak about the same society. At the beginning, I thought it was just a kind of secondary source, but uh, I thought maybe the most important archive was the traditional ones, which is for us uh, radio and television. And I, I got aware that uh, actually internet today is as much as important as uh, French as uh, television and radio, and uh, it will get uh, more and more important. It's really something I got aware of uh, progressively, and uh, I think now I, I got it.